Uh, this is Lesson 5, Part 4. Dr. Ken here with you again. Uh, we've looked at um, components, resistors in parallel. We've net looked at um, inductors in parallel with resistors. Uh, this lesson, or this part of Lesson 5, we're looking at resistors and capacitors in parallel. So, you know, same again, but of course our whole picture will be shifted in 90 degrees in the opposite direction. So when we're looking at resistors and capacitors in parallel, uh, when capacitance is in parallel with resistance, the current through the capacitive branch will lead the applied voltage by 90 degrees. The current in the resistive branch will be in phase with the applied voltage, so all the stuff through the resistor we can use simple Ohm's law and simple algebra to do our calcs around that. And then the total current and its phase angle to the applied voltage is found with a phasor diagram by drawing a phasor for each of the branch currents. Got to do it to scale and measuring the angle and length of the resultant phases. So same as we did for resistors and inductors, but now for capacitors. So, straight into a nice little worked example. This is worked example 18.4. And here we're going to calculate the branch currents. We're going to draw a phase diagram to find the photo total current and the phase angle difference to the applied voltage. And then we're going to work out the total circuit impedance. So the first thing we're going to do is look at um, what values we have to play with the things they tell us. They tell us the capacitor is 400, uh, 40, sorry, 40 microfarads, the resistor is 100 ohms, and the voltage is 320 volts, and we have a frequency of 50 hertz. All of this has come from the diagram. So first thing we have to do is calculate the branch currents and... Um, the way we're going to do that is simply use XC is equal to 1 on 2 pi FC. So it's this equation here, XC equals 1 on 2 pi FC. So 6.26 multiplied by 50 for our frequency, multiplied by 40 microfarads times 10 to the minus 6 to take care of the microfarads. So our XC comes out at 79.6 ohms. So nice and easy, we have our capacitive reactants. We can now use some straightforward Ohm's law. We know that I equals V on R, or I equals V on XC, because the XC is our AC resistance, which is what we've just found up here. So we can go 320 volts divided by 79.6 and uh, we're going to end up with an IC of 4 amps. And we're going to do the same thing for the resistance. We've got the voltage, the resistance, 320 divided by 100. And we're going to end up with 3.2 amps in phase. So again, our IC is 4 amps leading by 90 degrees. And our IR is... 3.2 amps in phase. So here's where it gets a bit more interesting. Here's our phasor diagram. Very similar to the ones we've done previously, but this time we're working above the horizontal. So we're going to calculate the total current. Again, we're going to put our 3.5, sorry, our 3.2 amps through the resistor on the horizontal. It's the pink phasor. Our current through our capacitor is leading, so here's it's leading. Remember, we're rotating in the anti clockwise direction. You can see my arrow going anti clockwise, so here's 90 degrees lead. That's what we've got in here 90 degrees. So there's our four amps. And again, simple parallelogram to find this position here. We project backwards to the origin and the length of the phasor, which closes the hypotenuse of the triangle. We can measure that off at 5.1 amps, and we can get our protractor out and calculate it at uh, 51.3, or 
or if you want to get hyper accurate we can use some trigonometry and some Pythagoras we could also work out what I t total is using Pythagoras by taking uh, I squared add it adding it to um, I c squared and then taking the square root of all of that it'll still bring you back to 5.1 and we can use trigonometry to work out the cos of the angle which will be I r as the adjacent on IT as the total cos to the minus 1 will bring us at 51.3 so we've measured that we've got IT now at 5.1 51 degrees and leading as it's a capacitive circuit so using Ohm's law now we can uh, calculate the impedance it's the third step so Z is equal to the voltage divided by the total current so total voltage divided by total current remember that's the trick so we have 320 volts divided by 5.1 ohms giving us sorry 5.1 amps giving us 62.75 ohms so our total impedance comes down to 62.75 ohms so again we can summarize what we've done here we just here we've just uh, made the graph a little bit bigger easier for you to see we've simply put onto the phase diagram the resistive current the capacitive current at 90 degrees We've done a parallelogram or a tip to tail. It doesn't matter as long as we get here. Project back to the origin. Scale that off at 5.1. Measure the angle 5.13. And bingo, we've got the values. And I've already taken you through. We could have used Pythagoras and trigonometry to get to those same places. So we now know that we have a total current of 5.1 amps. And it is leading the applied voltage by 51.3 degrees. So what happens if we do happen to have a resistor? Here it is over on the right hand side where my cursor is, R2 in series with a capacitor. We have to physically put one because capacitors don't actually have any internal resistance, which means they're always at 90 degrees unless we've put a resistor in the branch. And here we've put a resistor in the branch and you can see here on our diagram we've now got the current is no longer up here at a nice 90 degrees so again the offset or this angle created in here is because this resistor has been added so we've got a, still got a resistor in parallel so I've got, still got current nicely here and uh, So the reality is, if there was no resistor, then our IC would be at this nice 90 degree mark. But the reality is, it's not, and it's shifted by that amount created by the resistor that's in that branch of the circuit so the reality is we have here a nice little current triangle if we could get inside the resistor and measure the current we would have this current through here through the resistor this current through the capacitor and the resultant current would be IC total So maybe it's best that we explain this using a nice worked example. So here's worked example, uh, 18.5. We're going to work out five different things. We're going to take this particular circuit. It's uh, 320 volts, 50 hertz, 100 ohm resistor in parallel with a 50 ohm in series with a 40 microfarad capacitor. 
may seem complicated, but it's not that bad. So we want to work out what the current is in the capacitive branch, IC. We want to know the phase angle between the applied voltage and IC. We want to know what the total current is. We also want to know the phase angle for the total circuit against the applied voltage, which is our reference. And lastly, we want to know what the impedance Z of the circuit is. So we summarize our values. We have XC is 79.6 ohms from the previous example. And we know that our IR is 3.2 again from the previous example. We can calculate them out again, but uh, that's what we're being told here. We have R1 at 100 ohms, we have R2 at 50, and voltage at 320 volts, and frequency is 50 hertz. So first thing we've got to calculate is the current, and uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to calculate the impedance of the 50 ohm and the 79. I'll just put in some values there so it's a little clearer. So our capacitor at 50 hertz came out at 79 ohms and we've got a resistor in parallel but we want to know what the impedance is for all of this so we want to know what the Z is across this branch so if you think about it it's actually a triangle a right angle triangle like this and this is the R always on the horizontal the XC and then if we close the triangle that's our Z C. So our XC we knew was 79. I'll just round it to 79, it's easier to draw. And our R in this particular case for this part of the branch is 50 ohms. So basically we're using Pythagoras to calculate the hypotenuse of the triangle. So we're simply saying 50 squared plus 76 squared, take the square root of all of that, we're going to end up with a nice simple Z. C, that's the Z of the capacitor, at 79 ohms. Now, now we know that that Z equals, sorry, 94. I think I said the wrong number, but it's 94. So 94 ohms, there it is there. We can now use that because the applied voltage is the same across. The thing is just Ohm's law. The voltage divided by the impedance is going to give us the current. So we're going to take our 320 volts, our 94 ohms that we just calculated was the Z, and do the math, and there we have it. The current through the capacitor is... 3.4 amps. So the next step is to calculate the phase angle between the voltage and the current. Well, again, it's our good old triangle that we've... Uh, We've just been drawing, I'll draw it again for you. So here's our triangle again, just quickly. And we've got the R 
and we've got the Z. We know the Z was 94. And we know the R was 50. We simply want to find this angle to the horizontal. So that's why we're using cos. So cos to the minus 1 is the adjacent on the hypotenuse. Here's the adjacent, the 50. The z's the hypotenuse. And we do a cos to the minus 1. And we now know that that angle in there is 57.9 degrees. So 50, whoops, it's a terrible 50. 7 Point nine degrees. We might even round that to 58. It wouldn't make any difference. So the next step, step three, is calculate the total current. So that's got to be found with a phasor diagram, but we already have some base information that we've just been calculating. So we have the current through the capacitor at 33.4 amps, I should say, at 57.9 degrees, and we have the res current through the resistance component at 33.2 I should say 3.2 amps remembering that it is resistive so here's our phasor diagram we've simply plotted in the resistive value remember this part here I should say the IC already has its own internal resistance accounted for that created our 57 degrees so we simply take the current for through the resistor in parallel at 3.2 amps on the horizontal we project up at 57 degrees for a length of 3.4 being our current that we calculated in our capacitive branch correct angle it gives us this point we simply project back to the origin and it gives us the I total which we scale off at 5.8 amps and it's at 30 degrees. So we've been able to calculate I total 5.8 and it's at plus 30 degrees lead. And that's what we've done. Do calculate the angle. So again we measure off the angle and it's leading and our final step here is to use Ohm's law to find the total circuit impedance. Now that we have the total circuit current at 5.8, we have the total applied voltage at 320. So we'll have our 320 divided by 5.8. And that's going to give us our final answer here of 55.17 ohms. So whether it's a capacitor in parallel or an inductor in parallel, we follow the same steps to eventually calculate all those five aspects of the circuit. And again, just to summarize what we've done, we calculated out for our resistor and our capacitor, and we got this orange phasor at 3.4 degrees at 50 sorry 3.4 amps at 57.9 degrees we scaled that on to our phasor diagram and we just tipped to tailed it was nice and easy from the horizontal for the current through the resistor we found that point we simply projected back measured the length of the line at 5.8 amps got our protractor out measured that angle, came out at 30 degrees, and there we go. Reasonably easy to find the current and its angle in a parallel circuit that has both resistance and a capacitor, which may itself have a little bit of resistance in series with it. So a series parallel network.